Thank and, you. And really be willing to be naked and clean. Yes, yes. Yes, we have so much shame and guilt and denial that's been layered onto us from thousands of years of, you know, you know, I could name this and that and the other thing. We know what the sources are. But it, we're moving out of that. And I was just looking at my little dog. I have a little Jack Russell Terrier, and I, I was uh, headed for the shower, and he didn't have clothes, and I said, now, see, you get to be naked all the time. I've got to wear these silly clothes. <laughs> You know, because we're funny. still ashamed, we're ashamed of our bodies, and we can't do that. You know, it's not acceptable behavior. Um, although you can show things on uh, various uh, channels, Playboy and so on and so forth, then that's all part of the trap of getting lured into the the what's not real. And it's everywhere. And have you noticed that your tolerance level for just about everything outside yourself is has decreased almost to nil. Uh, news programs, television, newspapers, even going to the store. I used that word in an email to my dear friend this morning. I said I have zero tolerance for the rest. Zero. Yeah, me too. Me another too, thing zero. I've noticed. Another thing I've noticed very interesting is now I wake up at 4 or 5 every morning. Like, what's this about? I am such a good sleeper, but I wake yeah. up at 4 or 5, and I'm brilliant. It's like, oh, shush, go to sleep, brain, please. <laughs> but it's like it's the, when we're the clearest, when the vibration is the highest, yeah. and when yeah. the veils are the thinnest between the worlds. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I'm not ashamed anymore because I don't hang out with people a lot. I hide in the woods, I make my movies, and then when I'm on the phone, which I'm talking to people all over the world, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just sitting there like with the most brilliant people going, this is a better life oh, absolutely. than going to town and going shopping or having a manicure, doing all that crap I used to do. Right, right. And my friends right, are yeah. all over the world rather than in the town I live in, so it doesn't matter where I live now. Right, right, right. And now that we've got Skype, um, I mean, it just makes it so easy. Yeah, I, I haven't tried that yet, but it's, I've loaded it onto my machine. I'm kind of wary about any new programs. Uh, because of the nature of the corporate entity that has total control over everything. Um, but your Skype is a good thing? Well, I don't know. I'm not on it yet, but everybody's raving uh, about it, and they're calling me for free from all these well, different countries, and they're Skyping. I'm well, the same as you. I really don't want an eyeball on me while I'm sitting here. I'm funny about that. <laughs> I do. Um, but again, you know, my experience is showing me to be far more discerning, far more careful, and mm -hmm. the consciousness inside me knows that 51% of me has got to turn over to the happiness, the joy, the excitement, mm -hmm. the beauty of nature, and the goodness of people. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to mention a beautiful exercise that I was given um, by... Siri Ra, I did a, a show with her a few weeks ago, and she stopped the radio show to say, for 17 seconds, I want all of you to spend an entire 17 seconds thinking of the most marvelous things in your life and put them side by side by side. It was the most delicious meditation because it made me stop thinking about the world out there that you and I have been talking about for most of this interview mm -hmm. and remembering the marvelousness of all the things we love. Mm. And this was like, I mean, she stopped me cold because for 17 seconds and Ra and her partner counted, I was just pummeling my brain with beauty and love and romance and food and all the great things. And it still wasn't 17 seconds, so I kept going and going. And by the time we were done, I was in love with them. Wow. Because they reminded me to keep that in check, which is, I don't care if your foot's bleeding. Look how pretty your hair is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we yeah. have to we have to choose to change our thinking if yeah. we want to change our reality. Oh boy, is that a true true statement was never stated. Well, I say it in all three of my movies. Your thoughts create your reality, and then I'm mm -hmm. living this life where I'm. Waking up at four, and I'd like to sometimes, and I go, wait, wait, put on the brakes, and change your thoughts. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's happening. 
change your thoughts so that you can right. change the outcome of your day and yeah. the income of your day. Ah, <laughs> I like that one too. I do. Gosh, I'm getting all these new profundities. This yeah, wonderful guy, Bro- Brother Boko, has this great saying, which um, I love. He says, always remember, never forget. Oh. And I think when we, you know, really go into our divine self and we really go into the faith that we know that even though things hurt right now, there's a reason. It's here to mm-hmm. teach us, and it's up to us to do the lesson and grow from it or uh, have the reaction that the dark side is seeking, you know. Right, right. And then we're just falling into the, you know, into the bear trap. Yep. You know, when we're, we're expressing negativity and getting upset about the this and that and the other thing, the New World Order, the, you know, the have money delete and blah, blah, blah. I don't even want to make those a reality in my languaging. And then we're focusing on the negative and uh, not moving forward. We're, we've got one, our, it's like nailing your foot to the floor. Right. Which is what we have on TV news and all that. But again, we have a choice not to do it. So this will really... Make them mad. Here's another really sweet thing that I just heard recently. I love this. I called to make a reservation to fly somewhere, and the guy says, may I give you your confirmation code? And I said, yes, I've got a pen. He says, M as in marvelous, G as in gorgeous, E as in exquisite. I mean, he went down six letters instead of saying Mary, dog, banana, hick. You know, he gave me six. Words that all made me feel so good that I was dumbfounded because it was so unpredictable and such a gift. And I'm saying this on the radio so that every single person who's got a job where you give a confirmation code, if you or any kind of response, if you can give them such a surprise that they stop in their tracks and remember how beautiful we can be. It reminds us to be beautiful. Yes, yes. That's a wonderful thing. And it takes so little effort. It just takes being present mm-hmm. and also coming from your heart. Big time. So yeah, this yeah. this ascension into 2012, that we've got the two schools of thought, you know, the most important thing is to realize that our thoughts do create our reality, and 2012 is still up for grabs. There's no doubt that the negativity is being pushed to the surface there is no doubt that brilliant spiritual people are coming together mm-hmm. in communities and bringing this information forth, your radio show, my movies, the mm-hmm. people that we talk to on the phone still that made it into the new phone book entry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, seriously, yeah. 40 pages down to four, my life mm-hmm. changed. And my life yeah. changed right after I went in the crop circle. I know oh. something happened to me because everywhere I go now, I attract typically really much smarter than myself people and I like it that way <laughs> me too me too and I don't mean to say that like I'm modest because I don't even know I never considered myself highly intellectual highly intelligent until wow. after being in the crowd circles wow and because of the people that are there I mean it is you know we're all pretty wacky people but again <laughs> everybody's brilliant that I met yes. over there. I was just yes. astounded. And any time I took my camera into a formation, I had choices of people to talk to that would definitely show up with the goods. And then again, oh. here comes the helicopters, you know, so we have to wait and wait till the helicopters finish. And that was the hardest thing about the crop circles was being followed around really a lot by the military helicopters and filmed in the crop circles. And uh-huh. it just it took the joy out of a lot of them because they're really doing it now. They're trying to, you know, they don't want the information getting out. They want people to think that they're man-made um, by a couple of guys, you know, or teams of people with yeah. sticks. And, you know, that's all good and well, but even those people that could possibly be making <clears throat> these big, beautiful formations, they're being divinely guided. If they're right. doing formations that right. we are confusing with real ones. Right. Something is working them. Uh, and I did. Exactly. Yeah. I was at the Black Horse one night, which is a pub in Wiltshire, right near the Avebury Stone Circle. Mm. And I did hear a story of three guys that were drinking too much, and they were laughing about the night they were out making a crop circle. 
And they were going, ha, ha, you know, people really think, ha, ha. And boom, out of the blue comes a ball of light right over them. And the one guy ducked. He said he went his pants. And they were laughing wow. about it because they were doing this, and I think still divinely guided, and boom, they saw a ball of light because, you know, the balls of light don't really care what we think. Right. I mean, the people that are cynical, they, they very much care about humanity. And these mm. balls of light, whatever they are that you just saw outside in small yeah. form, and we see them inside sometimes. We want to blame it on, oh, my eyes are tired, but I'm saying to the world on this radio show, your eyes are not tired, and the more you look, the more you're going to see. And the yep. more we see, the more we're going to realize that the veils are thinning. And yeah. we have an opportunity to work with these higher elemental beings. We have every opportunity to be working in, at a much higher level than we are. doesn't matter that our DNA is being dummied down. We have an opportunity to bring it back. And these formations, these cross-circle formations being sacred geometric patterns are giving our minds and our DNA systems so deep as we look at the picture of a crop circle formation, they are giving us these subconscious messages and they are the first physical manifestation of communications from other worlds that humans can physically see. Each mm -hmm. one of us can look at a photo. Any of these people that are listening that aren't going to make it to the crop circles, feel free to buy my movie, but aside from that, feel even okay. freer for no money at all to dial up on the website crop circle connector dot yes. com. Yeah, Fabulous yeah. website, and they yeah. document every circle that is documentable wow. um, all year long. And for $15, which is nothing, you can have a membership where you can look back into the 80s and see every crop circle that's ever come down. Wow. And they are brilliant. Now, wasn't there one in particular that you were trying to photograph that uh, somehow got uh, lost in the ethers? Was well, I didn't try and photograph, but I photographed I mean, it. Yeah. yeah. What was that one about? Well, this was 2008. Again, I don't have um, all of the scientific data, conspiracy theories. I don't go into that realm, but I did fly over this one. I did go in it first thing in the morning. It was called the Avery Manor Formation, and to me it looks like an orbit. But what happened, and I'm just going to talk from a third-dimensional viewpoint, was I went in first thing in the morning with the front line of three people or two people or five, who knows. The formations are so big, once you get in your own circle, you don't see anybody else. So it was a stunning, fabulous formation. It just